Next on Worcester News Tonight, a Worcester man is behind bars tonight. He's accused of hiding a dead body and lying to police. Plus, prepping for the big game, one central Massachusetts beer distributor says sales are up. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. A historic document makes its way back to Worcester after going missing for nearly two centuries. The Trinity Lodge of Lancaster was given back their charter, which was originally signed in 1778. Thursday on the anniversary of its signing, the group welcomed the document back to the area. Our Cam Jandro was there and has all of the details. Cam? Yeah, Anna, the charter was signed just a year and a half after the United States became a country in 1776. Now, the charter was lost for quite some time, but today the charter returned to its rightful home in central Massachusetts 240 years from the day. On January 30th, 1778, Trinity Lodge of Lancaster was given a charter to work as Master Masons in North Worcester County. The historic document was lost for decades and only recently recovered. Tuesday, it returned home on the anniversary of its signing. I mean, look at that day. It's 1778. I mean, we're talking almost 1776. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's real history. The original charter was signed by Paul Revere when he was just a junior grand warden. Lodge Master Robert Agus says recovering the document is an experience he won't forget. To hold something that connects today's generation with yesterday's generation, you know, it's something that you don't find every day. So it is extremely important to be part of that. A charter allows masonries to operate here in the state of Massachusetts. After being lost, the document was replaced in 1858. After searching for nearly a decade, Right Worshipful Master Gregory Stahl is glad to have the charter back. It was fun, exciting, and frustrating all at the same time. Uh, for the longest time, uh, I had no leads whatsoever. To have that back in our, in our possession is an honor. To stand beside other brothers and stuff that have stood by Paul Revere doing the same thing is phenomenal. Freemasons aim to improve themselves through study and be of service to the public. Past master of Trinity Lodge, Michael Leonard, hopes Thursday's display helps spread the word about masonry. We have a lot of public here that don't know about masonry. Um, we're hoping that tonight's message of the long-standing moral values of masonry get out to the community. Now, after tonight, the charter will go back into a safe and secure place, hopefully keeping it good for another 240 years. Anna, it was Thank incredible. <laughs> Looked pretty incredible. Thanks for that, Cam. Students of the New Citizens Young Adult Program in Worcester gather together Tuesday night discussing their diverse backgrounds and how the program has impacted them since they began. Sultana Saleem says the New Citizens Young Adult Program in Worcester has made a big difference in her life. Sultana grew up in Yemen. She says when she first moved to Worcester, she didn't speak English, making it hard to communicate with others. When I came here, I wouldn't like go outside or community with people because I was nervous how I talk with other people. But when I started go to NCC and I learned like how to community with people, how to read, how to write, and I'm I feel better now. Other students have had similar experiences. Yes, I learned a lot in that program and it helped me to understand better. English is more better than in my country here. Mm -hmm then more practice to do. The students attending the program are between the ages of 18 and 22 who have missed three or more years in their education and speak little to no English. Superintendent Maureen Benenda oversaw the development of the program. She says with this opportunity, students are able to fill learning gaps. They pass the, the GED, the high set. They can go to the adult program. Uh, students are also able if they would like to, after they learn a certain amount of language proficiency and they, they have to pass the MCAS or be close to passing the MCAS mm -hmm. to go to the Gerald Creamer Center. Menendez says at the Gerald Creamer Center, students are able to get ESL services, take academic classes, and work towards receiving their high school diplomas. Some immigration advocates are critical of the program, saying the students are segregated and should be put into classrooms at public high schools. 
We reached out to one of those groups tonight who was unavailable for further comment. Benenda says the students in the program have special needs and this program allows them to meet these needs and it is not a form of segregation. A local organization is doing their best to help a community partner in their mission to fight hunger. Employees of Fallon Health served dinner to over 250 children and their families at the Worcester Boys and Girls Club tonight. The organization offered nutritional food to families, helping fight against childhood hunger in the city. Fallon Health CEO Richard Burke says a proper diet is crucial to the health of a child. The impact of that in terms of these young people being able to get uh, be uh, in school, focused, getting an education, getting the nutrients they need to be, um, to be healthy can't be overstated. The Boys and Girls Club says roughly 80% of their youth in Central Mass are living at or below the poverty line. A bad crash shutting down all lanes on Route 2 westbound in Lancaster this afternoon. State police say a medical helicopter was on scene. According to the Telegram and Gazette, a 45-year-old Worcester man was injured when the trash truck he was driving overturned on Route 2. He was taken to Health Alliance Lemonster Hospital, according to Trooper Paul Sullivan. No word yet on what caused the crash. A man accused of hiding a dead body under boxes on his porch is held without bail. Prosecutors say the suspect initially lied to police about the body when 27-year-old Justin Ramos was reported missing. Our Rosalind Flaherty was in court today and has the story. Xavier Broughton is accused of hiding the body of a man he identifies as Justin Ramos, a Worcester man who's been missing for three weeks. He indicated that uh, Mr. Ramos had been at his house uh, for a birthday party on the evening of the 7th. Prosecutors say Ramos's mom reported her son missing on January 9th. She believed he was at Broughton's house on Valley Hill Drive. The police, with the permission of the defendant's mother, did a cursory search of the premises outside the curtilage and they didn't find anything. Prosecutors say the 32-year-old lied to police for weeks. It was only after police found a body Monday evening when Broughton admitted Ramos died of an apparent drug overdose. According to prosecutors, he said he panicked, dragged Ramos's body down the stairs by his legs and left him on the back porch. Investigators located Justin Ramos's body in the rear of the home in an enclosed porch. He was covered up with cardboard, bo cardboard boxes and um, paper bags. It was clear uh, from, from the investigators' observations that he had been deceased for some time. Tuesday, investigators were back on scene of the home, where a missing poster for Ramos still hangs outside. I think it's sad what's going on here. This is a nice street, nice people. I think people are um, scared that how could it happen in such a nice area. A woman who lives across the street says Broughton was a nice man who always helped out. She says she's devastated for both families. There was never a time when he wasn't here. People are human and I don't know what happened. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Switching gears now, the countdown is on. We're just five days away from the Super Bowl, and today we're hearing from cornerback Tom Brady. Brady talked about last year's dramatic comeback win in Super Bowl 51 against the Falcons and how he hopes to avoid a similar situation on Sunday. It's a, you know, a great belief, um, you know, no matter what the circumstance, that we have enough to, to overcome it. Um, I don't think we want to try to overcome that again this year. That was pretty tough to do. Um, hopefully we can get a lead, play from ahead, play on our terms. Kickoff for Super Bowl 52 is at 6.30 p.m. on Sunday. Closer to home, fans will be glued to their TV sets, no doubt hosting Super Bowl parties. And that means a big bump for a group of local businesses who help a party staple. Our Brittany Schaefer explains. The Patriots may have a few more days to prepare for the Super Bowl, but here at Atlas Distributing, the Super Bowl has begun. They are fielding hundreds of thousands of orders of beer to help fans prepare for Sunday. Preparations are underway for Super Bowl 52, and it appears Patriots fans are once again thirsty for more than just a win. In Auburn, Atlas Distributing Inc. is working long hours to ensure fans and their customers are satisfied during one of their busiest times of the year. Super Bowl has really become uh, a key holiday for the year. 
uh, we see a big jump in our business, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. Vice President Jamie Saloy says the company sent out orders to 1,800 retailers in central Massachusetts just this week, and it takes their whole team. As soon as we know the Pats win, um, it's all hands on board, and as Bill Belichick says, everyone, everyone has to do their job. Everyone's out there making sure that uh, customers have the beer they want uh, and they need. And uh, we're building displays and uh, we're activating all our brands at retail. So Lois says having the Patriots in the Super Bowl three times in four years is great for business. It's interesting because uh, you're very invested as a, as a fan personally. Uh, but once we know we're getting to the Super Bowl, uh, you get a little more excited uh, professionally because you know you can count on that bump in sales. This team has been really good, so we've gotten used to it. But... Uh, nothing we take for granted. One of their retailers is Ted's in Charlton. They say during this time of year, their sales depend on the Pats. It's definitely a different world when it comes to the Pats being in the playoffs and it, going to the Super Bowl. I mean, the, the days of games come almost like holidays. It, it's kind of crazy how much it ramps up. We've been extremely fortunate with having them as good as they are. And business aside, both Ted's and Atlas are hoping for a similar outcome for Sunday's big game. We hope for a big win on Sunday. I hope for a blowout. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to sit through another stressful Super Bowl, so hopefully New England takes it and, and takes it handily. Now Atlas Distributing says they'll be working up until Saturday to ensure all orders are delivered. In Auburn, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. For nearly two decades, the North Brookfield Fire Department has been using some of the same pieces of equipment, including air packs, which help firefighters breathe while fighting fires. And in another year or two, they'll be out of service. Our Chandler Walsh was, has more on what the fire department plans to do. Worn from the heat of fighting fires, North Brookfield Fire Department is in serious need of new air packs. They're at the end of their life right now, as far as time frame, uh, what the NFPA standards call for. Fire Chief Joseph Hallway says in as little as a year, some packs won't be up to national fire protection standards. He says the packs are 18 to 19 years old and some have already required many repairs. Chief Hallway says the old equipment poses many dangers. The last thing you want to be is in, in a building fire with, uh, in a hazardous environment and have a failure and uh, not be able to breathe or, or take in hot toxic air. The department is looking to get 23 new packs. Costing $9,000 each, they're hoping to pay for them through a federal grant. Chief Hallway says reliable air packs are a necessity. This is the life, it's the lifeblood of a fire department. You can't do anything really without Scott air packs. Lieutenant Patrick Curritsey uses the packs regularly. He hasn't run into a problem yet, but it doesn't mean he doesn't think about it. It's always in the back of your head because of the age of the packs. They are um, running up in age, so anything can happen something to be aware of. The department says having new packs will make the community safer. To know people going in with gear that's that old um, is nerve wracking, you know, so the sooner it gets replaced, the better we all feel. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight.